Fusion Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. And welcome to Fusion Mobile Nigeria meeting. You are on to our chemistry clinic. And today we'll be taking a quick roll of what you need to know. Our objectives are that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to differentiate between pure and impure substances. You should be able to differentiate between elements, compounds, mixtures, um, identify elements. You should be able to differentiate between a chemical change, a physical change, a chemical process, physical process. And also, you should be able to explain, identify different separation techniques. Chemistry actually talks about properties of things, talks about properties of matter. So the question really is, what is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. We are, matter can be identified in different, three different states. These are the solid states, the liquid states, and the gaseous states. And a pure substance, of course, is any substance or any material that only has one particular type of material embedded in it. You can have pure nitrogen, pure air. Pure air, of course, contains several different gases in it, but it is pure because it contains only air. Properties of matter. In solid state, the shape of a matter is always definite. If it is a solid, it has a definite shape, it has a definite volume. It expands on its end slightly, well, compared to others slightly, and it is almost incompre incompressible, that is, cannot be compressed. While in the liquid state, it does not have a definite shape. The liquid always takes the shape of its container, but it has a definite volume. The, um, under expansion, it, ex it expands also, but moderately, as against solids and compared with the gas. And compressibility is almost incompressible, though, yeah, it compresses just as we observe in the solids, it also compresses, but the, compress the level of compression is very, very low, is minute. The gas is, of course, indefinite shape, indefinite, uh, indefinite volume. They do not have a particular volume of their own. They just occupy as if you give a, you give um, a gas of two mole, the whole earth to fill. It will fill up the entire space. And if you give it a small can to fill, it will also fill it and it will fit in perfectly. The only difference you will observe is the pressure. And to, talking about the response to it, their expansion levels are very, very high. And they are very, very compressible. Pure substances, of course, they are usually identified by two major things, their boiling point and their melting point. That's how we usually identify pure substances from impure substances. Impurities tend to reduce or increase, they alter the level, the melting point and the boiling point of substances. So, boiling point, of course, is that stable temperature at which a uh, body changes states from the liquid to the gaseous state, while the melting point is the temperature at which it changes from the solid state to the liquid state. When a matter is not uniformly mixed together, we call it an heterogeneous mixture. Yeah, we have some, some matters like we discussed earlier. Mixtures generally are impure, they are impure substances they contain more than one substance in them and by that virtue when they are not properly mixed when you are seeing when you are able to identify one component in a mixture from another component then it is called an heterogeneous mixture but when the mixture is properly mixed together then it is called an homogeneous mixture an homogeneous mixture is a very good a mixture of salt and water when you put salt in water and you stir it carefully the entire salt dissolves. It gives you a mixture that appears plain, appears normal. That's an homogeneous mixture. All pure substances are homogeneous matters. That is very, very, very important to note. And a mixture could be homogeneous or heterogeneous, as earlier discussed. If it is looking as though there is nothing other than just what you are looking at, it is homogeneous. That is, you can't identify the components inside it. And when you can identify the components, they are heterogeneous. An element is a substance which can actually take part in any chemical reaction. 
That's the simplest part of a substance that can take part in any chemical reaction. Talking about elements, we all know, of course, hydrogen, hydrogen as an element, we all know oxygen, we all know helium, and many of them. These elements are actually called elements due to their homogeneous nature. They are all homogeneous in nature. They all, they all have some particular characteristics, some particular properties that make us identify them as elements. Similarly, we have compounds. Compounds are, com are substances that contain more than one element. Um, compounds are chemically mixed together. Meanwhile, the mixtures are physically mixed together. Mixtures, unlike compounds, are physically mixed together. They can be separated by a physical process. Compounds cannot be separated by physical processes. An element is a spear substance, as, I, as earlier said. And it contains only one type of atom. We have element can be subdivided into three actual types. We have the metals, we have the non-metals, and we have the metalloids. Element possesses several properties: the atomic number, the proton number, the electron, the electron number. Number of protons and number of electrons basically identify the element itself as an atom. The atomic number of an element is the number of protons present in that element. Also, we have what is known as the atomic mass. That's the mass each element contains. Elements can be subdivided into three parts. We have the metals, we have the non-metals, we have the metalloids. Metals are generally good conductors of electricity. Non-metals, they are terrible conductors of electricity and heat. While the metalloids are um, halfway in between. They conduct and at times they do not conduct. They, sh they, sh they share both properties in, its, in themselves. Metals are generally shiny in, on appearance. Yeah, most of them are looking shiny. Though, we do have some metals that are not even existing in the solid state. Metals like hydrogen exist naturally in the gaseous state. And metals like mercury exist naturally in the liquid state. But most metals do have this shiny look in their solid states. And non-metals generally look dull. Many of them are even non-solids. Many of them are in the in their gaseous state and liquid states on, in natural environments. Also, our non-metals, many of them do appear in the solid states. But they also have dull appearance. They do have dull appearance. Metals generally are strong and hard. Non-metals are weak, soft. Generally, metals are malleable. That is, they can be machined. They are ductile. That is, they can be drawn. They can be drawn into wires. Um, Non-metals, nope. Since many of them even are gases and liquids, definitely they can't. They are brittle, even when they are solids. And metals give this surreal sound. That is, when you hit them, you get a tune, a nice sounding tune, but non-metals, they do not possess these characteristics. So we have compounds now. Compounds, they are pure substances, of course. They are pure because they do contain certain, um, they, they, are, they are components. They contain atoms, actually, elements, which are mixed together to form a pure substance. Just like I said earlier, water. Pure water is... A pure substance. It contains hydrogen and oxygen, but it is a pure substance in itself. They are always homogeneous. That is, they have, they are when they, whenever they mix together, they mix together and they form something that is not showing the the two the components that are forming them are not separated one from the other. They are well blended together and they are fused together since they are chemically combined. Aside that, they do have a chemical formula. They are always represented with formulas. Um, they, are formula, they have um, properties, they have a definite boiling point, a definite melting point. Their chemical formula summarizes up their entire weight. Of course, from their weight you can tell their, from their chemical formula you can tell their weight. They have a fixed proportion in which each of the components in them are being combined. So, they, they, they're, not, they're not just a combination of just um, like hydrogen and oxygen now we have in water 
hydrogen is always two molecules and um, two L two atoms while the oxygen would just be an atom if hydrogen and oxygen should combine at another ratio they would not be forming water as we would have in hydrogen peroxide where we have two atoms of hydrogen interacting with two atoms of oxygen mixtures are impure substances obviously they do not have a definite chemical formula because since they are impure the impurity level can vary even if even though they may be homogeneous at times talk about um, a salt solution I had salt a, a tablespoon of salt to water and I prepare it I leave it on my table I have another um, cup of water and I had five tablespoons of salt both of them are salt solutions but their levels their level of the constitution of salt in each of them vary from one to the other properties of mixtures um, they may they can be separated by a physical process they do not need a chemical reaction to separate whatever constituents that they do contain differences between compounds and mixtures compounds are chemically combined mixtures are physically combined compounds their components are fixed they are definite um, mixtures no they can vary in compounds a new substance is formed the elements remain the same but in mixtures they are just mixed together it's still what you put in there that is still there and in in uh, mixtures you can easily separate the components you can easily separate what they contain the elements you can separate them from each other but in compounds this is not possible separation techniques these are methods by which we can actually separate things that have been physically mixed together that is ways in which you can separate our mixtures Fusion Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go.